Hey everybody, this is Phoenix Down, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. In the last episode, we skated a few laps around the Ice Palace before defeating Cold Stair and rescuing the Fifth Maiden. In today's episode, we need to find a way to access Misery Mire, a portion of the Dark World that's completely isolated from the rest of the map where the next dungeon awaits. Now because there's no way to get there through the Dark World, Logically, our, our only course of action is to find an entrance in the Light World, which is why I summoned our fine feathered friend here with the magic flute. We fly over to location number 6 and land on this ledge here that we can't reach otherwise, and with the Titan's Mitt that we got in the Village of Outcast, in the Dungeon of Blind the Thief, we open up a portal to the Dark World that will take us to Misery Mire. It is a tropical swamp area of the, of the Dark World, I'm actually just going to dash along the outskirts here to save myself some time, avoid the flying pterodactyl enemies, and there are other enemies like little lamolas, and there's like those one-eyed Zoras, I think they're called Kus, like KU. But anyway, uh, one thing to, to take note of is that there's actually three different caves here in Misery Mire, positioned roughly where the three front entrances to the Desert Palace are, which I think is a nice touch. It's good that they were consistent with that, with the whole mirroring light and dark worlds kind of theme. Anyway, I want to enter this cave first. There's only one entrance to the Misery Mire dungeon, but this place is worth checking out too, just to get a little bit of treasure real quick. Won't take long at all. We have these pushable blocks. Get these out of the way. In this first chest, we get 20 rupees, and in this one, we get heart piece number 21. Alright, only three more to go in the game, and then we're all done with heart pieces. So yeah, we're just about there. The game itself is getting pretty close to finishing too. But anyway, now it's time to head over to the uh, entrance to Misery Mire. And we got a coup shooting fireballs. I'll just let that one sail by. The other cave over that way, I believe that has like, it's a fairy fountain with one of those larger fairies that will just recover your health to full. But anyway, just like in the Desert Palace, when we needed the Book of Medora to enter, we need an item to enter this one as well. The Ether Medallion. That's why I went to Death Mountain a couple of episodes ago to get that. Stand on this tile and cast the Ether spell to summon polar winds. We've got a cold front coming in to cancel out this tropical storm. And the rain has ceased and the entrance to Misery Mire's dungeon opens. It is a very scary looking dungeon indeed. Kind of makes me think of the uh, Cave of uh, Cave of Wonders from Disney's Aladdin in a way, just creepier. But anyway, we enter this creature's mouth basically and we are entered we have entered the the dungeon of misery mire I'm gonna take out these zoles first just to get them out of my hair you know there's at least one more over there now technically you're you're expected to use the hook shot to uh, enter this uh, area but if you position yourself just right I didn't do it right there I don't want to get too close because I'll fall in the pit okay get that heart I want full health let's try this one more time and uh, otherwise I'll concede defeat you line yourself up just right and uh, too close to the block. Ah, crap. I'm using it. This USB core controller is... All right, there we go. It's a little too sensitive at times. Or not sensitive enough in other cases. But anyway, yeah, that's a little speed running tactic. You can actually do this dun dungeon without the hook shot. So uh, some... Uh, some, uh, let's, uh, I was gonna say let's players, but speedrunners will, uh, actually sequence break and do this, and manage to find a way to do this dungeon before, uh, the Swamp Palace. And anyway, uh, Misery Mire is the introduction, uh, the Link to the Past introduction of Wiz Robes, which thankfully are not, no, ah, oh, crap, Bemos, they are not anywhere near as bad as they were in, uh, the original Zelda. I was hoping for a heart, but oh well. Defeat all the wizards and uh, the path op ahead opens. Now we're gonna go this way and uh, I didn't mean to run into the wall there. Follow this sparky over this way. We're gonna take, uh, there's a lot, ah crap. There are a lot of different uh, doors in this room. It's a kind of a central hub area of this dungeon for a little bit, a little bit of the way. We're gonna take that door first. Push the block to open this one. Those flaming sconces will shoot fireballs at you just like those statues that spit fireballs at you. So let's dash up this way and open a chest to get our first small key. Now we'll go back the way we came. Yeah, we're gonna see some screens uh, multiple times in this dungeon, but it's not nearly as bad as the Ice Palace in that regard. In this room, we got some style foes to deal with. There's a key over here. Smash this guy. 
recover some of my magic power, and now I'm going to pull out the Kena Birna, or Burna, whatever. Walk on the spikes, push that button, open up this chest for a small key, and, uh, well, I guess I can deactivate the staff now so I don't waste my magic. So yeah, two keys in the same room. I don't think they ever do that again in this game. That's not very, I don't know how common that is in future Zelda games off the top of my head. I'm sure it happens before, but... But yeah, that's, that, that's relatively new for A Link to the Past. Anyway, I want to go this way first since those blocks are... Uh, I gotta hit the crystal switch to lower those blocks in order to progress and also to collect another small key. So let's go this way. Down here, I'm just going to ignore all the Stalfos and just go for this door. They're not even worth my time. And once again, I'm going to summon the protective magic of the King Kena Burna, or whatever. And go down, straight down here. Take the door on the right. The other door, I don't believe that opens ever. And we're back into the central hub area. I'm going to use my key to open this door. And now I want to take out this uh, Beery to get a key. Open up this door. Do not hit the crystal switch. We don't want to do that. Switch over to to my fire rod. And light all these sconces to open this door. Ah, crap. Not doing this quite as well as I would like, but things are going relatively smoothly, and we got the compass. All right, now we want to go back the way we came, but we want to be careful because those tiles are still in the process of flying. So let's d dodge the side. And go straight down here. So we got these new, uh... Ah, crap, I took another shot to the back. We want to refill our magic power here. And go upstairs. To the first floor. I'm going to switch over to my regular lantern now, the lamp. Push these blocks out of the way. Oop, whiz robe. Take that. Push these blocks out of the way and light these lamps. We're going to want to do this in order to progress forward. Alright, and now I'm going to switch over to the fire rod because you can push these blocks, but I'd rather just... I'd rather just blast them with the fire rod. And we've got some rumbling going on in the next room. The path forward is very slowly opening for us. So slowly, in fact, that all the fires are extinguishing. The time for everything else completely stops, but for some reason those uh, flames can uh, turn off. Anyway, there's a communication tablet here, and Sahazrala basically tells you what you already should be able to guess on your own. Light those torches, Link. But anyway, let's jump down this hole. Don't even need to bother with those whiz robes. And in this chest, we get the big key. Alright, we got the big key before we even got the map in this dungeon. I mean, you can get the map before this, but... It requires an additional amount of uh, backtracking is totally not worth it. So let's warp into this room, and I'm not even going to open that big key door. Instead, I'm just going to go over here. We've seen this room before. Stupid Andy fairy And we're going to return to the central hub room. So I'm going to dash down this way. And go up this way. Let's pick up the skull. Hit this switch to open up a chest. With a small key, and now we're going to go back the way we came again. I think the fire bar is back down that way, so... Alright, good. Now let's go back down to the lower levels here. Let the Sparky uh, run its course. Oh, whew, that was close. I thought that guy was going to run right in my path. I'm going to take the first door on the left now on this level. Actually, I'm going to switch over to my hookshot while I'm thinking about it. Let the Annie Fairy go by. Position myself to shoot across this gap and dash across here dodging laser beams and the uh, the, the walkway is collapsing behind me and in the big chest we get the cane of Sumaria a very helpful cane if we make proper use of it but it's mysterious and the game won't tell us what it does without experimenting experimenting with it ourselves so uh, I'll figure that out I'll demonstrate that in due time we need that in order to finish the dungeon and here we get the map so uh, let's take a quick look at uh the layout of the dungeon. Yeah, we've seen the major majority of the dungeon already, especially the uh, top two levels. But we have to go into the basement if we want to access the uh, final stretch of the basement where the uh, boss awaits. So I'll use my key to open up this door. It basically just takes you to the uh, central hub room. It's not important, but 
you know, we got pretty much all the keys we need anyway. Let's go up forward this way. Turning to some familiar ground. Uh, yeah, that, that, that heart's not worth it. Ah, crap. That wasn't worth it either, but okay. Don't worry, I'm not, I'm not sweating though. We got plenty of anti-fairies in this dungeon. Take out the whiz robe. Take care of that. I'm gonna pull out the magic powder and oop, wait for him to line himself up. Nope. There we go. Third time's the charm, and we are fully restored. Let's climb up these uh, steps before more whiz robes pop up. And just dash straight ahead into the basement, level two. It's got a dark room. I don't believe we can even light this one up. But there's no shortage of enemies here. Let's use our last key to open this door. And all it is is just a treasure room with some rupees I don't really care about, but I figured why not show it off anyway. And we got a Zol here. I'll take him out. Build up some magic power back. And here we have a pressure switch. We hit that, but unfortunately uh, it uh, seals itself after the fact. So what I want to do now is demonstrate the Kena Sumario. I mean, Sumaria. Sumar Kena Sumario. It's a me, the Kena Sumario. Anyway, it creates blocks that you can position on a... Well, you can... You, it creates blocks that you can use in various ways, including as uh, pressure plates. You can use that to, in uh, the uh, Link to the Past, uh, the Super Nintendo version of Link to the Past, to uh, skip uh, some of the backtracking in the Ice Palace if you, do, if you did this dungeon first. So you wouldn't have to go all the way around and push that block off that ledge after flipping the crystal switches over and over. You can do that and, uh, you know, it's a time saver in that regard, but it requires doing this dungeon first. It's, to it's up to you how you play the game. But anyway, we get we're in another room. Dodge that spike. Now, let's see. I want to pull out my, uh, my magic powder because I know there's an anti-fairy coming up on this conveyor belt. Take that. Switch that crystal switch. I'm gonna do it sooner or later anyway. Ah, nuts. I wanna push the bomb up against the wall so it doesn't get pulled by the conveyor belt. And enter this room. Well, actually, I don't think you actually have to enter this room. This is just another treasure area. Figured why not. Guarded a little bit better than in some of the other dungeons. Ah, forget it. You know what? That five rupees isn't even worth it. Time to go back the way we came. I believe the anti fairy is still gone. Just get off this conveyor belt. There we go. Don't swing your sword unless you have to because of that turret. I've made that mistake in my practice runs. But anyway, you wanted to flip that switch in order to uh, open up the, the way forward here because it lowers these blocks and it keeps these anti-fairies contained here for the time being. What you do now is you bomb this wall up here and enter this cave. So you can switch, you know, hit this crystal switch to uh, toggle the uh, blocks again. And now let's progress onwards once again. We're in a light, litted, a lit room finally. Watch out for the swirly white thing or yellow thing, I mean. Toggle the switches one more time. We got an unlimited supply of zoles dropping from the ceiling. I don't know where they're com coming from. I don't think I want to know, but so let's go around the the perimeter of the room here. Yes, yeah, so you want to toggle the switches again to uh, lower that. Ooh, crap! Annie fairy's coming. Get away from me! All right, take that. Okay, up ahead is the boss room. I'm going to actually pull out my bows and arrows. It's been a while since we've used these in a proper boss fight. So let's open up the door and prepare for a boss battle against Vitreus or Vitreus, how Vitreus, however it's pronounced. Anyway, you just want to spam your arrows as much as you can and watch out for his lightning and do not stand in the water when he's uh when he's zapping because even if the bolts of lightning do not hit you, you will still take damage because it's electricity and water. And the more eyes you destroy, the uh, more frequently he will uh, he will shoot his uh, lightning at you. Alright, and we defeat all those eyeballs, those four don't matter. Now we would just, all you have to do now is just uh, shoot your arrows at him. Eight arrows and Vitreus has been defeated. What is it with the uh, a link to the past and all these eyeball based monsters Did they just decide they were just easier to create but whatever we got we cleared misery Meyer and got the sixth maiden in her crystal cocoon so once again victory is ours and what words of wisdom does she have to share to us now 
Well, let's find out. Phoenix, because of you, I can escape from the clutches of, of the evil monsters. Thank you! They all say the same thing, but... Ganon captured us because he couldn't break the seal of the wise men with his power alone. And then, using the wizard Agonim as his pawn, he drew us to the Dark World. After cracking the seal with our powers, he sealed us inside of these crystals. He then gave us to his loyal monsters, but Ganon didn't plan on you getting this far. Now, Princess Zelda is waiting for you inside of Turtle Rock. Please hurry! And I understand, Turtle Rock is our next destination over on Death Mountain. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. May it indeed. So, alright guys, that went pretty smoothly actually, all things considered. And next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past... Well, I did say before we weren't going to do any more exploration episodes. And that would just be dungeons from here on out, but uh, I neglect. I kind of forgot a couple things. We do have to travel some uh, new areas of Death Mountain, and there's also a, uh, you know, now that we cleared Misery Mire, uh, there's a special item we can buy at a certain shop that's become available to us now. What it? What would that be? Well, uh, we'll find that out next time on Let's Play: The Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past. This has been Phoenix Down, and I will see you guys then.